Section 8, how can I apply? Where my baby daddy at? Yes, yeah, somebody asked that. So I'm in Florida. I am with the Tampa Housing Authority. I signed up for project-based housing. I had signed up like years ago. I mean years ago. So I was on the list forever. They called me and they told me that I was on top of the list for these Pacific apartments in a different city. At the time I was married, so me and my kids and my husband we moved to those project-based apartments and these apartments was beautiful. Carpet all throughout. Everything in the kitchen was brand new. Big bedrooms. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and freeze the video right here because I was not explaining everything how I wanted to explain it. So I was on low income housing. So everything was based off, off your income. So the apartments that I was accepted to, they had their own requirements. You had to have a job. Your income had to be a certain amount. So every every project base, every low income housing have their own requirements in order for you to qualify for their apartments. Now, sometimes what they would do here is have little openings. So they would say, okay, Section 8 is open from the 26th to the 28th. And you have to hurry up and go in there and apply. I know some people just trying to get in to fit in. You, you feel me? Like they try to get in whatever. Me, there's a couple apartments I will not go to in Tampa. One is Robus Park. Two is Bama Heights. Bella Heights apartments is wonderful. When I say they are beautiful, like they upgraded, like it was like a mess back in the day and it's beautiful inside. That's just me. Like, would you rather pay $40 a month and somebody shooting every other day? Or you will be struggling with your kids or living with family members? I'll pick that any day because the safety of my kids matters. Okay. Let's, let's go back. My bad. I got carried away now. So I stayed there for maybe like two years. And there was a lot of emotional abuse going on in my household. It was hard. And I had to make a big decision. I decided to pack my kids up and leave. So mind you, we both was on the lease. But I was the head of household. When we left, I didn't know how any of this worked. I didn't know what was gonna happen to us if that means I'm no longer on the program anymore. But at that time, I was just thinking about the well-being of my kids and making sure that they were just in a good environment. And, oh my God, just thinking about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. One minute. All right, I'm back. I'm not gonna get deep into, you know, what what led up to all of that, but I had decided to leave with me and my kids. But when I left, we went to a shelter. And when we went to the shelter, I had to let my caseworker know, you know, I, I left. You know, I, I no longer want to live in that place, like, what can I do? Me and her basically went back and forth. She's like, well, can you see if he can leave? You make him leave. And I'm like, he's not gonna leave. That's his place too. What you mean, can I see if he can leave? And she was like, well, I'm gonna call and tell him he has to leave. And I'm like, look, all I'm telling you is that me and my kids left because of these reasons. There has to be something y'all can do. Like, you separate the voucher, 
you know, I get my own, he gets his own, or what's going on? Like, how, how does this work? And she was telling me, no, that's not how it works. You're head of household, so you're supposed to be the one that's in that apartment. And since you left, that's basically telling us you no longer want to be on the program. Or you need to tell him to leave and you move back in. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not fin to cause more problems for me and my kids by going over there and telling this man he has to leave or, you know, forcing him out and he needs somewhere to stay as well. So it was a whole situation with my casework or whatever. It was, when I tell you, leaving an abusive relationship and then also have to deal with housing issues be the most draining frustrating horrible thing i had to go through like it was just it was so much they wonder why a lot of women and men go back to the situation because y'all make it hard for people me being me I started reading everything. Everything that they give you, when you sign up for housing, they give you a whole package. The policies, everything. I started reading everything, because normally, you know, you sign them papers, you ain't reading that. Like, come on, be honest. We ain't reading that. So, I'm reading through everything, everything, everything. I'm doing research, I'm Googling, I'm on Facebook asking questions everything i went straight into survival mode when it came down to me and my kids and making sure they had a roof over their head i went straight into survival mode but let's back up i went to a shelter mind you when i was going into the shelter it was scary <laughs> because i i had family members that went to shelters and they went back to their abusers because they like the shelter is no place where you want to go so i was scared but let me tell you how God works. I'm sorry, y'all, because this 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 might resonate with somebody. Let me tell you how God works. I'm on the phone with the lady about the shelter. She's like, okay, you have two options. You can go to this shelter or you can go to this shelter. So she gave me two shelters to go to. She said, the first shelter you can go to today. The second shelter you can go to tomorrow. Cause you have to, I, they give you a time frame. So once you say you come to the shelter, they give you like 24 hours or is it 48 hours? So like two days or something. And then after that, they give you a spot to somebody else. They give you a room to somebody else. Now the first shelter was local, right there in the city. Literally probably like 15 minutes away. The other shelter was like an hour and a half away. Mind you, my car was not in working condition whatsoever. So I was like, I don't know what clicked in my head, but I was like, I'm going an hour and a half away. And I think it was because I didn't want to be so close. He was still in the city. I didn't want to be so close. So I chose to go an hour and a half away. We packed everything in the car while he was gone, which was so... <sighs> I was so afraid of how damaging that was going to be for my oldest daughter, cause I'm the one that had her help me get, we only took like two baskets, cause I had to make sure they had a little bit of clothes or something and put it in the car. But I was so afraid of how that was gonna damage her, like how she had to like, we had to sneak and, <sighs> okay, all right. We ain't gonna talk about that. Just driving, we went to the gas station, put gas in the car, the car went crank car way crazy. I was like, God, like, what? We was up the street from the house and the car went crazy. So I went in the store, my son came in behind me, got a Pepsi or whatever. Uh, he poured it on a battery and the car, the car crunk up. I'm pretty sure he saw me and his dad do it one time. And I was so proud of him because I'm like, Okay, let's go. You know what I mean? I went to the shelter. It was beautiful. It was nice, y'all. It was so nice. It was mind-blowing. I was like, 
when I tell you it was beautiful, it was clean, it had all types of food for everybody, a big kitchen, a big playground, it's amazing, amazing. And I was like, thank you, God. Like, I just, I'm like, thank you, God. And I had to keep reminding myself that God would take care of us. We're okay. Like, we're leaving from a toxic situation, an unhealthy situation. God got us. It was hard. So, when I got to the shelter, um, I had a therapist. And I kind of went over, you know, and a case planner. I kind of went over that, I'm, you know, in Section 8. I mean, not Section 8. I'm in, on project-based housing. I don't know where I'm going to go. They were just trying to give me resources as far as um, they have this program where you, after you leave here, you can go to an extended program where you stay at a different place. But it's more like having your own spot, but everybody else is close to you. And I was like, I don't want to live like that. So I kept doing my research kept doing my research and boom i found the vawa act that's what it's called violence against women act bingo it just fell in my lap <laughs> literally i was in this facebook group and it was about you know abused women stuff like that i, I had to have something i had to have something i was in counseling i had to have some other type of support and somebody put something about Bawa. Immediately, I typed in Bawa and Section 8. It was right there, y'all. Right there in my face. It was right there. The Section 8 people ain't gonna tell you this. The housing people ain't gonna tell you this. Nobody is gonna tell you. When you're on these programs, they ain't gonna tell you nothing. You gotta know all of this stuff. You gotta have, you have to fill yourself up with knowledge. I'm telling you. So if you are a woman that is in a shelter, in an abusive relationship, any type of abuse, and you're on section eight, you do not have to stay where you at. If you do not feel safe, you file for the VAWA Act and you get the heck away. Do not feel like you have to be somewhere and be unsafe with you and your kids. Don't ever let somebody tell you you have to stay. No, you do not. There's stuff out there for women and men that are in any type of danger. And then with the VAWA Act, they do require you to have some type of paperwork. You don't, well, you don't have to have any like police report. Nobody don't have to be on um, like a restraining order or nothing. You can just write what you went through. Then you can have like your therapist. You can have your psychiatrist. You can have someone in that type of field. Just fill out a paper saying that you're getting services. That's it. And if you're in the shelter, boom, that's all you need. I filed for the VAWA Act. And when I did the VAWA Act, I got Section 8. They either have to find you another project-based apartment or they have to put you on Section 8. And since I was already in project-based housing for two years, they put me on Section 8. And so I had got Section 8. And when I had got Section 8, I had a certain amount of time to find me a place. I found a place and me and my kids moved out of the shelter. That's how that went. <laughs> I'm just so grateful as to where I'm at today. And people don't know your story. People don't know. People think that you're just on this program. You're just using the system. You're just ta um, taking taxpayers' money and all this. This system is... This system was created to help people like me. To help you gain some type of stability so that you can be out on your own to be good. Like, it's not, nobody is, I hate when people get on here and be negative. I hate when people try to talk down on somebody that, that was at a struggling point in their life and this program has helped them become stable. I don't want to.
want to be on this program forever. And the reason so is because they be all up in your business. Bank accounts, they monitor everything. You have to report every single aspect of your life. Everything they have, you have to report it. I don't like people up in my business. Like, the only business I like people up in is the business that I tell you. Other than that, I don't need you digging up your nothing. I don't, I'm, I'm currently trying to apply for the FSS program that they have. It's um, the self-sufficient program. You get to a point where you can get off the program. Also, like, they put money, like, in your account. It's like an escrow account or something. I'm still trying to figure out that information. They told me to come, I called them today. They told me to come down there and fill that packet out. Because they actually pay you for all your goals. Like, if you get a job, keep that job for this amount of time, I guess they put money in your account. And then by the time you get off the program, you will be stacking. You feel me? You will have money to help you get started. So not only am I signing up for that program, but I'm signing up for the home, home ownership program. So that way I have both. I'll be trying to, you know, own a home. I also establish and complete certain goals and steps in my life like i am ready y'all i am ready this program was great for me i love it and it has helped me and my family when we was in the most darkest spots in our life when i didn't have much and still right now to this day i don't have much but i'm ready to involve and just i feel like i've grown a lot and don't get me wrong though i like I'm just this person that don't want to work. I ain't got no job. And I listen, judge your mama. Don't judge me. I've had a job all most of all of my life. I've worked mostly all of my life. If I'm not working, I'm hustling. Like, don't play with me. I'm not the one, the two, or the three. I'm nowhere in my blood. My bloodline ain't lazy. I come from a certified hustler, somebody that got out there in the streets when I was small, okay? Not to be boasting about it, like it's, it's something cute, but my mama has never been lazy, never. She may, she, she, have, she may not have been a very affectionate person, but she made sure we had all the time, okay? So that, that's all I wanted to get at, you feel me? But... Yeah, y'all, so that's my story with Section 8. Let, let me run down the rules. When you sign up for Section 8 or project-based housing, they do a background check. Yes, they do. They go back five years, so you can't have nothing violent, what is it, violent, sexual, stuff like that. But they do go back five years. Also, if you do get accepted on the program, you have to report everything everything there's an income limit another reason why i want to get off of this program and try to get somewhere because it's like they almost limit you to growing like what so you basically telling a person you can have a job but you can't make this amount of money no it starts with your mindset i am right now my mindset is to get off my mindset is to grow. My mindset is to, I no longer need this. Give it to somebody else that needs it. That's where my mindset is. But I'm going to use this program as a stepping stone. I'm already in it. Now I'm going to sign up for the self-sufficient program. I'm going to sign up for the own, home, the home ownership program. And I'm going to wean myself off this program. And that way, this can be for somebody else that needs a stepping stone. That needs to get where I'm trying to get. But it's hard to get on Section 8. My way was go through project-based housing first. And then, or is it called low-income housing now? Low-income housing first. And then go and work your way to Section 8. I know if you're in an abusive relationship or in any type of abusive, domestic abuse, anywhere where you at, and
saying you're in a shelter, you can apply. Apply, apply, apply. Ask those caseworkers, ask your therapist, ask, ask everybody up in there about the housing program because people with disability and people that's in any type of danger, any abusive relationship is on the top of the list. I'm trying to think what else to tell y'all. What else can I tell y'all? That's what I want to say because I wanted y'all to know that this is a four bedroom, three bath. My voucher is a three bedroom. So I qualify for a three bedroom. I don't qualify for a four bedroom voucher until my daughter is six years old. Now back then, I thought it was until they were five. They turned five. But I think things have changed. But I had ended up finding this place. He showed me some other place and I was like, I can't, I can't stay in another type of duplex, community, whatever. I can't do it no more. So I turned down that place. He told me he had this place. And I was like, oh, I want to see it. But he was like, this is a four bedroom. And then he told me the amount. And I was like, dang, I don't think. So I texted him. I was like, I don't think I can qualify for that. And he was like, no, you should be able to. He was like, just come see it, blah, blah. So I came down here, saw it, oh, fell in love. I've never stayed in any type of um, mobile homes or nothing. I, don't, I think I saw inside a mobile home one time in my life. But I fell in love because it was just beautiful and it spoke to me. The outside spoke to me like, I can breathe. I don't have nobody really around me. I was like, thank you, Jesus. Like, ugh. So I fought for this place because my casework is like, you don't qualify for this? And I was like, please, like, how can I qualify? And then I'm talking to the landlord. I'm like, can you drop down the price just a little bit? She was like, well, this is the price that we were covering. And I had to send it to him. I'm like, please, 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 please. And he's like, okay, I'll do it because you seem like a nice person. You got your kids. You seem like you, you know, keep up with yourself, your family. I know you'll keep up with the property and you qualify for a full bedroom next year so I should be able to get the full amount. I was like, thank you! <laughs> God is so good and I feel like he had this place waiting for me, y'all, because he was telling me that the girl that stayed like way over there, she had wanted this place and she got a three bedroom. So he was like, Will you talk to her and just let her know, like, you know, just say you got a four bedroom because I don't want her to feel bad or whatever. I said, oh, okay. I was like, you know what? God had this place ready for me. He had this place set up and ready for me. That's what it was. <laughs> like, God is just so good, y'all. Like, I don't know. Amazing. Like, just to think about what I have came from to now. Me and my kids coming from a shelter, you know, coming from a smaller place, and now this is huge. <sighs> when God said he's going to take care of you, just keep trusting and believing. Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. So, where my baby daddy? Y'all heard the story. <laughs> For the ones that follow me. He's nowhere active in his kid's life. Um, we still go back and forth about the kids, which there's nothing to go back and forth about. It's simple. You know what I mean? Come up with a plan and stick to it. Be consistent. We don't have to be together for you to be in your kid's life. People need to understand that and realize that. You do not have to be in a relationship with your baby mother or your baby father in order to take care of your kids, okay? I have made a vow to myself that I will never go back to what God brought me out of. And I'm not to say that people don't change. People can change. But it starts with your mindset. If you still think the same, you have not completely changed. And that's it. And that's all. I hope
hope you guys like this video go ahead and subscribe to this youtube channel if you have not go ahead and turn on your notifications i didn't do it ma 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 turn on your notifications hit that like button comment down below subscribe